Hey, I'm here in New York at uh, Biohack the World. Just had a mini presentation and I thought I'd, uh, I'm on the rooftop in front of the Chrysler building. Thought it'd be a good backdrop to go over a question I get all the time and I should have done this video a long time ago. Comparing the, f the three drinks that we have right now. KE4, KE1, and Snake Water. When to use the different drinks when not to use different drinks. So first off, let's start with KE4. This is our, our main product. This is what most people get. And it is 50% ketone ester and 50% water. Now, we polled in our Facebook group and 80% of our active users actually don't even dilute it. But for many people, it's very strong. It's like a shot of ginger. And you might want to dilute it with one or two parts water. That means if you put in 10 mLs, or two capfuls, the, the cap becomes the measuring tool. If you do one capful, you'll add one or two capfuls of water. You don't want to add it to a whole bunch of water because it makes the whole thing taste worse. You want it to be like one, you know, one shot. So two capfuls, you'd add two capfuls of water. Um, but that's optional, doesn't do anything for it. So this one is next to no salt, just ketone ester, does have, you know, it's, uh, organic stevia, no monk fruit, and it's you know super strong. KE1 costs about 10% more on a cost per gram basis of ketones, and KE1 is six times more water, so it's much more diluted. Uh, what we did was actually we took the average amount that our customers were using of KE4 and put the equivalent of a, of a mix of ketones that will, that will go into into KE1. So KE1 is a blend of ketone ester, ketone salt, and free acid where the salt is removed from the, the salt is removed from the, uh, from the ketone salt. And not to be confused with any of the ketone salts, people might say, oh, I've tried ketone salts, they don't work. Yeah, that's completely different. Those are most of the time racemic ketone salts. And this has uh, 80 to 90 percent less total salt load on a per gram basis of D beta hydroxybutyrate. So just wildly different than anything else. So oftentimes we hear it all the time. Oh, the salts didn't work for me. And there's whole other videos on uh, ketone salts versus ketone ester. And there's nothing inherently wrong about the salt. But when you get the D form and if you mix it with the ester, then your sodium levels and your potassium levels, actually all four salts, aren't so high that it causes a problem. So this one has um, approximately 160 or 170 milligrams of sodium. This is an older version, which is why I'm look, having to look up. And uh, potassium is also about 150, 160. Uh, and, and then the, there's calcium and magnesium as well, just a small amount. So it's got all four of the salts. People think of sodium as salt, but all four of them are actually salts or technically bases potassium, uh, sodium, uh, calcium, magnesium. And that's added to this. The main reason you would have this instead of KE4 would be um, for the taste. That's the number one, number one reason. If taste is not an issue at all, pretty much KE1. There are some benefits in having the salt in there, but you could just as easily, you probably already have your own salt solution. If you're an athlete, you're already adding more salt anyhow. So you already have that salt solution to, you know, don't get this just because of the salt, because you probably already have you know that uh, figured out. This also does dilute much better. It dilutes much better in a half liter bottle of water that you want to slow release throughout the day, studying for multiple hours. You know that'd be a great way to use it. Uh, also for in, for sport, the KE4 you know doesn't dilute too well. It could make your drink pretty nasty, but this actually would be pretty good tasting. And it's a lot more convenient instead of um, having to pour one or two, three capfuls. It's much more convenient all in one. Some people start with a third down to a half and some people will take the whole thing. Different purposes, different uses, whether it's to try to curb, uh, curb hunger and try to skip a meal or whether you're trying to use it to uh, prolong your fasting or if you're doing it on a fasted ride, all that stuff. There's entirely different protocols. Uh, full videos on different protocols. I won't go into that because that's 
I mean, it's like a 90 minute video of how to use ketone ester. It does not work like caffeine and that you just take it anytime it just works, no. This is like having, it changes everything. Your heart rate can go down eight beats per minute. Your cadence can change when you're, when you're cycling. Um, it just, when it works, it works, but when it doesn't work, it can really not work. So don't try it on game day. Go look at the other videos on you know, game day. So, and, and these, the KE4 and KE1 can really be anytime. It can be pre-workout, during workout, uh, post-workout for recovery. Some people will only take it post-workout for recovery purposes. Um, and also before bed uh, and for fasting purposes to extend uh, so you can skip breakfast, skip lunch, and make it so you eat one meal a day, or you can use it for multi-day uh, fast. Now, the snake water is drastically different. The snake water is all of the ingredients that I wish I could have added to KE1 at the beginning, but I wanted to keep that really pure, just you know, one ingredient, and that's it. And it comes with a card that has, you know, has so many ingredients we couldn't even put it on the bottle. But the main two differences are it has carbs, carbohydrates, but it has a slow carb called isomaltulose. And the idea there is that when some people take the ketone ester, the KE4 or KE1, and they're not ketogenic, their blood sugar will drop too much and actually impair performance, make them feel flat. The idea behind snake water is a small amount, just five grams. Uh, if you buy this product separately, you can buy, uh, if you wanna try KE4 and just that ingredient, to isolate the variables, you can buy Now Sports Carb Endurance, that's isomaltulose, but they'll recommend like 30 grams, but we only put five grams per serving, and there are two servings per bottle, but many people actually use even half a serving, so they're doing one fourth of a bottle. And uh, the idea is just to keep the blood sugar from spiking too low, and by the way, if you have a, you should get one of these, a continuous glucose monitor that helps you uh, determine what your blood sugar levels are. Sorry, I had to change the locations. So the snake water has this carb in it, but just a small amount, like five grams. Uh, it freaks out some people, but it's, it's a slow carb to keep the blood sugar from dropping too much, which is especially important for non-keto athletes. Uh, but then the second main ingredient is tea cream. Tea cream is similar to caffeine, so I wouldn't consider this drink healthy like the other drinks. Um, but it is different than caffeine in that caffeine has a learned effect where it stops working after a while. The tea cream is designed to, to work you know, multiple days in a row. And it's also slow release. So that's tea cream. But it also has many other ingredients such as uh, branched chain amino acids. It's got uh, CoQ10, the highest quality cordyceps, um, resveratol, uh, L-carnitine. It just has a dozen ingredients and that is just you know everything. Now, that drink you could use pre-workout or during the workout, but it, I would not suggest it post-workout for recovery. You don't need the carbs, you don't want the carbs post-recovery. Um, and you don't need you know, a tea cream post-recovery either. Also, you wouldn't want to use that for sleep. So, uh, some people have actually found it, even though it costs another 10% more expensive than even the KE1 because of all the ingredients, and by the way, you do have to shake it. This is not something that is all water soluble and nice and pretty. It's got a lot of stuff in it. Um, but you're not gonna wanna use this before bed as well. So uh, KE4 and KE1 can be used pre-workout, post-workout, during workout, uh, before bed, fasting, all that stuff. The, the snake water, I probably wouldn't also use it for fasting because it has the carbs in it. I, I don't see why that would be beneficial. Um, maybe, uh, and also, also for brain use, like CEOs and for you know, presentations, if you're gonna be job interview, the KE1 or KE4, the snake water could be good for that. We haven't had many people test that yet, but with all of the nootropics that are in it, I, I really think it could work well. Uh, for the brain as well. But you don't want to take too much of that because if you take too much of that tea cream, it can give you a spike and a crash. It's not going to be the ketones, it's going to be you know, the tea cream. So too much of a good thing on that front. Uh, so snake water is also limited. You don't want to take too many of them because of that tea cream. If there wasn't tea cream in there, which we might, if there's enough demand, we might come out with a version without tea cream. Um, you don't want to take too much of it because that has its own limits. But there are athletes that have taken it for eight, 10 hour events, and then they do take you know, one full bottle, um, maybe even two full bottles by spreading it out you know, over multiple hours. 
So that's basically the difference. Um, when in doubt, you just get the KE4, at least start with that. And then you know isolate the variables because some people have taken snake water the first time and they you know they they feel something. I say ah you might be feeling the tea cream and I despise all the ketone salts that uh, are sold with caffeine and tell people hey if you're gonna buy a ketone salt don't buy it with caffeine because what you're feeling is the caffeine. Um, ketones multiply the caffeine like two to three x. It actually does not multiply the tea cream apparently. Um, but you just don't want to be confusing the feeling of the ketones with uh, something like tea cream or caffeine. All right, so email me if you have any questions, frank at ketoneaid.com. So now I can send this video and people say, hey, what's the difference between the three? Thanks.